Because we've already stated in our manifesto the decision will bring a cut down on illegal immigration, guaranteeing legal employment rights, and also a rise in workers' pay. Hence, immigration shall be reduced and decided on now. Yes, as we've uh, said before, the current state of our economy could be a better opportunity to great Do you think it will happen? Who knows? I know some guys at work saying they're going to vote in favour. The immigration thing doesn't faze them one bit. It shouldn't matter. We've done the whole citizenship process. We filled in those papers weeks ago. If they really cared, they would have sent something back by now. It was never going to be a quick process. What good will it do? We haven't lived here long enough. You've worked all that time. We pay taxes. This must mean something to them. There hasn't been said anything about deportations or the like. Those in favour say nothing will happen to the legals. Do you really believe that? Whether we pay our taxes or not, we're still foreigners to these people. Getting upset won't change anything. I'm not upset, I'm worried. I'm worried about these people going too far and changing things on a whim and decide to start throwing anyone that wasn't born here back across the pond. Or decide to only allow one of us to stay and the other to go. Don't forget to make your vote that? count by voting for BPL. A vote for BPL is a vote to put the great back in Great Britain. Don't, don't worry too much. I'm a journalist for the WU. I have an appointment with Mr. Lanigan. Just one moment. Chaos, isn't it? I'm sorry? Chaos all this political gulf. If we had any sense, we'd lynch them all up by their tongues so they couldn't start any more of their nonsense. That sounds like a good idea. He'll see you in his office now. Come in. This is Thompson. It's good to meet you finally. Likewise, Mr. Lonergan. I hope you had a pleasant journey. It was fine. Please, take a seat. Mr. Lonergan, I have, well, I'd say the whole country has some questions about your party's upcoming decision. Naturally. You said on the phone that you'd have no problem with taping this conversation? No. Mr. Lonergan. Um, there have been some concerns we have, and as you're one of the forums of the BPL strategy on the decision, I'm here to get your side of the story. There have been many doubts from the opposition about the decision's outcome, and I was hoping you could clear the air for us. I hope so too, Mrs Thompson. I trust that everything I say will be written down exactly as I say it. And why do you ask that? The reason I agreed to be interviewed by your newspaper is that I want everyone to know I'm open to the press even though I've been misquoted and misrepresented over the past few weeks. I'm hoping that your newspaper will be fairer to my side when it comes to publishing. And what gives you doubts about our paper? The workers' union leans a little more towards reverse. Your paper has not exactly been very fair when it comes to reporting on my party. For example? Fascist in nature? That springs to mind. Harkening back to old times. Not exactly what I would call non-partisan reporting. And you have reason to resent those claims? I am well aware that there have been some misunderstandings about the decision. I'm also aware that some have used it for justification for some deplorable ideas. I wish to distance myself and my party from those ideas. And I want to reassure everyone that the BPL and myself have only the country's interests at heart. I say. Now that I've made that point known, I am more than happy to answer your questions. First question is, 
What, in your professional opinion, are the benefits of favouring the decision? A state of stability. Mainly, no more money being thrown at interests overseas. Interests that serve little in the long run. Choosing to keep all our money within the country will create a surge of new jobs. Taxation will drop, ensuring that the average worker will get a rise in their pay and improve the economy all round, with no more regulations on our businesses that have been of no advantage to us. Second question. What, in your professional opinion, are the detriments of favouring the decision? Self-governance will be challenging, especially after having years of throwing hands in our decisions. The process of entire self-governance will take time. Money will be spent on appointing new officials, holding new elections. In the end, however, prosperity will be secured. A currency that is only valid in a single country will lower its value overseas. Will this have a disastrous effect on trade? It is possible that may come to pass. But I'm sure that higher wages and an upturn in the economy will alleviate all that when it comes to purchasing goods. And what is your guarantee of that? I'm afraid I have no guarantees. It is still only a possibility. But if it does come to pass, then I'm confident we will find solutions. So you admit your party does not have all of the possibilities considered. Um, should any problems arise as a result of the decision? There are some plans being put into place, should the worst come to be. But these are still being written and considered. Are you concerned that a lack of reasonable foresight might have an effect on the voters once the poll stations open? I know that when the time comes, all possibilities will have been considered and plans put into place. Once again, what is your guarantee of that? What would you have to say to guarantee the voters' confidence? Mrs Thompson, would you care to take a walk with me? Um, excuse me? I've been in this office for hours. I just thought we might continue our conversation in better surroundings. Um, yeah, I, I guess so. Great. Mrs Thompson, I was wondering if I could ask you a question of a personal nature. Which is? What gave you the push for a career in journalism? It was my major. What was the original motivation? An interest in finding the goings on in the world, then being sure it reached out to everyone else. Do you believe that you've been successful in doing that? Why the sudden interest in my profession? Purely of an innocent curiosity on my part. Personally, I like it. We often need them, putting our intentions into words that sound awfully complex. Some would call that a politician's flattery. I was once to be an actor. Not much difference. There's a salary difference. You're joking, right? Politicians make more money than anybody. They make more money than the average person on the street, at least. The average person in the street is either in a minimum wage paying job or is a recipient from the welfare state. Being poor does not make you a working class citizen. Improving our economy will negate the need to care for the poor. Bringing more jobs is intended to reduce the number of people that say they've got no prospects. I care about the poor. I am for a society that caters to their needs, something the average politician will never understand. I don't believe that the prosperity of any people can be achieved by the misguided optimism of socialists. No, neither myself nor the workers' union are what you call socialists. Your paper seems to have a habit of explaining the ideology favourably. Well, maybe there is some merit in an ideology that would be more favourable to the poor. One that doesn't relegate people based on how much money they make, or where they came from, or what status they hold in society, or what lifestyle they choose. Based on my understanding of history, I'm certain it's not the sunshine and rainbows you've just made it sound. Well, maybe not. But I support the ELU. Myself and my party support those who are less fortunate than others, those who scrape and scrape just to get by. Even when the voting season is such a long way off. Mr Lonigan, there's many potential dangers about the decision. We could have a financial crisis. The country is in a near state of panic and if the average man had any sense, the decision would be reversed. We all know the effects it will have should it come to pass. We? I'm sorry? I've noticed that you use the word we quite a lot. Almost as if you're speaking for the whole country. What about those people who favour the decision? What about those who believe in retaining our country's sovereignty? 
There's a fair few people who would actually call that nationalism and all that that implies. I believe that this country's values were founded by those men who fought and died for it. I also believe that their sacrifices should be honoured, even those who are no longer with us. Did those men fight for the rights of people who didn't share their own colour or nationality, who were living on the same soil as they had been? For all those who were here, even the immigrants who we sheltered from harm. Do you think that if the decision passes, then the same goodwill shall continue? I intended to do so. But immigration must be reformed. We have to weed out those that seek to take advantage of a system they have no intention of being a part of. Illegals have no place where legals should have. What would you have to say about those who are still trying to gain citizenship? As you say, the immigration process is certainly going to be affected by the decision. Immigration must be controlled. Protecting our borders is integral to the safety of any country. And much as it pains me to say, it's a small price to pay to keep out those who would wish harm to anyone. One could say it's the government that causes some of that harm. It is better to do something than nothing. I only have one more question, Mr Lanigan. Are you confident that those in favour of the decision are so for altruistic reasons that they believe in everything you have said? The decision is in the hands of the people. Their views on it are their own. I can't change the way they feel and the way they see the state of the country as it has been in the last couple of years and how it's affected them in the last couple of years. I hope and pray they come to the right decision. Mr Lanigan, I thank you for your time. It's been my pleasure. Mrs Thompson, I understand your doubts, but I believe it will be the opposite. The country will prosper and trade will begin again.